Station, and I can't believe we're going to talk about school. We're going to be back in session, but it is about that time of year, which means that Project Impact, which is a nonprofit organization, it's working to combat education and equity in Mississippi. We've got our founder Brian Ferguson joining us, and it's their time to ramp up for their backpack drive. So, hey, Brian. Hello. How are you doing today? I don't want to talk about school starting back. It makes me sad. I'm going to have a middle schooler. But it does mean that there are good (laughs) things on the horizon with uh, you guys' backpack drive that you do every year. But first, let's talk about Project Impact. You had a vision for this several years ago. And so what was that? It was simply just to um, help people who needed help. Um, and But it was twofold. It was also to get people active in the community, too. So it was about helping people, but also uh, giving other people who wanted to help people an opportunity to give back. Because I always said that it is sometimes it's really hard to help people. So we wanted to make that easy, too. And you do that through gearing kids up with the proper tools and utensils and things that they need to go back to school and, you know, at least have a good foundation. So talk about what's been going on since July 1st to the 10th. Y'all do this every year. It's a backpack drive. And what are you doing it for and who is it going to? So this year, uh, of course, yeah, we've been. This is our eighth year. We've been, been doing this for a while now. Uh, and this year, what we wanted to do is, is it's been a terrible year for storm victims this year. And so, one of our focuses this year was to try to focus in on those uh, those students who have been displaced all over the states, uh, uh, specifically in the Delta up in Rolling Fork. And uh, ironically, I'm from there. I'm from that. That's uh, you know about. 10 miles from my hometown of Glen Island, Mississippi. So I know the people. We all know the people. So many people have been affected around the state uh, with storms. So that's kind of our focus this year. We want to uh, – had a goal of uh, getting about 5,000 backpacks and school supplies to students around the state uh, with a focus on those students who have been displaced from storms. So what is the impact when you help and donate or help with uh, financial donations that then goes to buying backpacks and school supplies for these children? What are you seeing after eight years? I mean, you think, oh, what can a couple crayons or a backpack do? But what's the lasting impact? It's kind of funny because we did this one year and thought, okay, let's just, we, that was kind of our first thing we wanted to do because we was just starting the organization. So we just thought it was just a thing to do. Uh, but what's interesting is that it has been a extremely large, uh, impact for students and parents. And it, you know, I, I always say I remember being the, on the first day of school, having a backpack ready, uh, packing my backpack up and all those things. And, those are some of my fondest memories from school. So it hadn't changed no matter how many times we think all oh, the world is changing around us. Those little things like that are really important for students, and we love just being impactful and being a part of that. The other piece to Project Impact, Brian, I'm looking over at projectimpactms.org, is the fact that you guys have a lot of scholarships. Um, how did those come about? I know that they're different, and they're given by different, I guess, um, donors, but why was the scholarship piece of it important as well? Because, like I said earlier, I think that it's extremely important to give people an opportunity to give back. And one of the things, when you, if you can't do an endowment and you don't have uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars and you want to do an endowment at big schools and those things, but if you have an opportunity to give back $2,000 or $1,000, it's very uh, hard to find a way to do it. So we want to make it easy for our sponsors to be able to uh, impact students in their communities. So we created the Build Your Own Scholarship Program so that anybody would have an opportunity to give back. Uh, and students have been applying, and we've uh, uh, actually given out over $100,000 in scholarships. Um, so it's been a really impactful program. We love it. The uh, scholars love it. But also those sponsors are really excited about giving every year, and that's one of our primary objectives. You mentioned, Brian, one of your objectives with Project Impact is to give the community an opportunity to have a way to help the community, right, like to sort of give back and get involved. Why do you? Why did you pick education? It could have been health. It could have been so many sort of other areas. Why was education the, the main thing that you saw could have the most lasting impact? I just think that it's kind of our core, is our foundation. It's where everybody starts. Um, the first thing we do uh, is try to learn. I think learning is so important, and I wanted to make sure we emphasize all the time that education is extremely important uh, for um, just the sustainability of life itself. 
So that was kind of where um, what I wanted to focus on. It was so, it's so many initiatives that you can do. Just education just feels like home for my wife's a teacher. She's a principal now. Uh, my mom was a teacher. Uh, and I've been a student forever. So education, I think, is just felt right. And it feels right to start the first day with a good backpack full of all the things that you're going to need, which in turn, which I feel like is important to say, when you support uh, backpack drives or school supplies drives, you're also supporting teachers because many teachers have to come out of pocket for supplies that either students don't have or they don't have in a classroom. Whether that should or shouldn't be the case is not the argument. The argument is it's just non-debatable that they have to do that. So when you support these book drives, too, then you're also, or backpack drives, you're also supporting um, our teachers. So I think that's a good thing. How can we um, donate, Brian? How, how can we help support with backpacks? So we started a fundraiser on our social media fundraiser on social media on our Facebook page, Project Impact uh, MS. So you can find us on uh, Instagram or Facebook, and you'll find a fundraiser there. So that's uh, the easiest way to give back. You mentioned that this round, or maybe it won't be the whole round, but is this round being raised specifically going to t- tornado victims? Do you know which counties or which schools those would, might would be at? Yes, and Sharkey County is kind of the focus right now. Um, so that area was hit really bad a couple of months ago, so our primary focus is there. So we'll have some other counties and cities that we support as well, but that, that's kind of our first initiative to uh, take care of that area. And, Brian, we'll make sure that we share the link to donate in the Good Things Facebook group as well if folks are interested in that. But if they want to go online, what's the website? The website is projectimpact.ms. I'm sorry, it's projectimpactms.org. I gotcha. All right, well, I appreciate your time and all that you're doing, and hopefully folks will get out and help those students that will be going back to school in August in Sharkey County and beyond. Well, thank you again, as always. I very much appreciate it. All righty, there you go. It's hard to think school's coming back so soon. I don't want to think about it. For many of us, we're like less than a month away from school starting back and kids getting their backpack and their new shoes and the whole thing. And it's a little overwhelming and it's a little sad. It's never, or maybe it's exciting. Maybe you're ready to get back to the structure and having the kids back on a normal routine. I'm just feeling a little emotional because it's going to be like getting a middle schooler. So, I mean, just that transition. Transition within schools is always hard, but you want to see your kids go and succeed. So that's-